Hi, this is Lyndall with Watery Wishes and today I'm doing the Simon Says Stamp kit unboxing for the Sea Treasure kit. And first up we have the beautiful Mermaids clear, clear stamp set. It's a 6x8. And then we have a bag of treasure, treasure chest sequins, some Mermaid Ultra Fine Embossing Powder, two metallic envelopes, one in lavender and one in white. And it's very hard to see how shiny they are here on camera. We have some aqua glitter paper. We have the sheet of tonic deep sea dive luxury embossing paper. We have one sheet of 80 pound Nina Solar White cardstock. We have Distress Oxide inks in Stormy Sky, Tumbled Glass, and we have Simon Says Stamps Clear Embossing and Watermark Ink Pad. So all up you get the three different ink pads, a piece of white cardstock for stamping and colouring, the Tonic Luxury paper, the glitter paper, the two metallic envelopes, the treasure chest sequins, and the 6x8 Beautiful Mermaids stamp set. And that's the kit. And here we go making a card with it. So by the time I got this kit, the internet was full of so many mermaid cards. So it's very hard to do anything different with this set. But I hadn't seen very many interactive cards done with this mermaid set. So I decided to um, pull in my Lawn Fawn Slide On Over dies. And you don't have to have specific Slide On Over dies to do an interactive card or make a slide track. You just need to have some circle dies that are one is a little bit bigger than the other. And big enough for you to create a track for you to uh, put a penny or a piece of paper and some foam adhesive or some foam dots or dimensionals within that track onto the penny or piece of paper and the image that you're getting to spin around. So here I've got a quarter of a sheet of Canson XL paper and it comes in I think it's 12 by 9 sheets so it's a little bit larger than an A2 card size and I'm just applying the oxides like you would watercolor and I'm doing it fairly lightly at first I just want to build up a little bit of color and I don't want it to get too dark. I sort of want the background to be subtle but still there. So I'm trying to dry it with my heat tool which it's not the best heat tool but it gets the job done as long as I haven't turned it on within the last five minutes and it won't turn on again but yeah so as you can see I've turned it around and I can see that I've got the lighter color sort of going largely from one corner to narrowing down at the other corner so I'm going to use that and create like a light patch within so it looks like the sun is streaming down into the water so I've had this glass tonic mat for like I don't know a couple of weeks now and I absolutely love it it's great it's so easy to clean okay so here is the Copic coloring and I'm using E04 E15 and I think it's E 
33 and E50. Well, I'm not 100% sure. I'll find it out and it should be on the screen now. I think I also bring in some E11. Now, I'm sort of laying in where my shadows are going to be. Ah, oh, there's the E11. And I'm trying to make it so that she's tan because I'm going to do some blonde hair on her and I'm going to be using a few of the same colors I'm using for her skin I need to create a little bit of a contrast with her skin but not so much that the blonde hair looks strange so I want her to look naturally tanned but I don't I don't want her to look like she's been in a tanning salon if that makes any sense and because I'm doing the blonde hair quite light and I know it sounds strange that I'm doing the blonde hair with browns but it actually works quite well and you'll see in the end how it sort of works so here I'm taking the E50 and I'm just trying to figure out where to put the shadows in and I'm using my lightest color to do that because hair is quite voluptuous and wavy and there's a couple of spaces I put that light color down that I won't be putting shadows in and that's why I put the light color down first just to sort of see it without having to commit because I've just put a dark color down so then I go back in with some dark color I just use my color blender to fix a spot where I colored a little bit too much now I'm putting a bit of E11 in which is quite a light color and that is the E50 which is an extremely light color but I want her hair to look blonde with some depth but almost bleach blonde like it's sun bleached so I'm trying to go really light on the shadows while still creating depth and the contrast should come with her really light hair against her tan skin and the blue in the background and I'm going to color her tail in gold so or a yellowy orange which will eventually look like gold and for that I use Y13, Y15 and Y17 so I'm basically using the dark color on the shadowed bits and where the little scales are drawn to give a little bit of differentiation um, within her tail so it's not one solid color and I, I go back over those with the two darker colors to make sure that it's a little bit more defined and I color her tail in using the same colors again with the colorless blender just to push that little bit of color that came outside of the lines back in and here I'm laying in the darker color along the lines of her her tail and then I go in with the second the mid-tone and then I go in with the lightest which is very little bits in between that is YR23 and I'm going to use that on the starfish and I'm using it to make it look like a very dull type of gold because later on I'm going to put some it's like a yellow tinted crystal drop over it which I didn't actually get on film but you'll see in the final shots and now I am coloring in her seashell top with V22 and V25 though it's mostly V25 and as you'll see I took both ends off of my V25 marker because it is very juicy and it has sort of plopped on me and a big 
heap of ink has come out and it sort of you've got to watch it so if you take the back lid off your Copic when it's a little bit over full it equalizes the pressure in there and it's less likely to come out in big massive amounts so here I've stamped some of the seaweed out and I'm just extending the lines and it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be once it's colored and you had the scene all put together no one's going to notice whether it's perfect or not and it will all look fine unless someone absolutely scrutinizes the card like under a microscope people just aren't going to notice you'll notice because you've done it and you know what you've done now they were the greens and they are G40, G43 and G46 I think and I also use some touch new markers and I use them because I have a color that's actually lighter than the 40 marker and darker than the 46 that blends quite well with the Copics that I have so as you can see there's a strip of paper there and I've tested the colors out to find which ones were best for me to use and it's just because I wanted to make sure the bottoms of the grass the seagrass was really dark and the tips were on the larger pieces a little bit lighter than that 4-0 So it just helps me get a, a bit more of an ombre effect within that grass. And basically, I want the, the bottom of the grass dark because it's closer to the ocean floor. And the tops of it are lighter because it's close to the light source. And as you can see, that light touch new marker is much lighter than the lightest Copic in this situation so now I'm trimming this panel down so that I believe it is five and a half by four inches so I can have an eighth of an inch on either side of the of the blue panel that I've watercolored with the oxide inks and I've also used a little bit of white uh, Hero Arts pigment ink and streaked that down so it looks like there's light rays coming in. And as you can see, I'm planning to put the slide on over dye into that section so she spins around on the card he's being very careful to peel up that tape it looks fast but it's actually sped up a little bit and now I'm just using a bit of post-it tape to keep them together so that it's easier for me to line up. I know where they sit. And as you can see, I've adhered two pieces of the mirror cardstock on either side. And I've actually put a little bit of score tape on one side of the coin. And I'm going to leave the backing on it. Because it's that release paper, it's sort of plasticky and slippery and sometimes it will help give your coins a little bit more of a slip and what I'm doing here because it's very close to where that gold cardstock is I'm putting a, another bit of score tape there so that it's got a way to not get caught on the edge of that cardstock and the slippiness of the backing paper of that score tape will they should glide on each other 
and it will just help it slide over that area just a little bit easier. So there's a tip for you. Put a little bit of score tape on your coins or whatever you've got in there. If it's card sock, do the same thing. Cut it out and um, just make sure that you brush the edges with a powder tool to make sure that there's no sticky bits. Now I'm just making sure that the tape doesn't impede the coin moving around whatsoever. I'm taking all the backing off all the center bits and leaving bits still adhered on the outer edges so that I can do that if I need to. <laughs> and I doubled up this foam tape for this panel and the center bit. And now I'm creating a three layer stack of foam for the mermaid so she's got plenty of room to slide around. And I've adhered that one piece of foam tape onto her. Now I'm sticking down all the little bits of seaweed. Sorry, it's partially out of frame. I'm still getting used to this camera and it's not as easy to tell when I'm in camera frame or not as with my other one, but I'm getting used to it. So at least I'm closer to the work surface this time and it's not as bad as it was <laughs> that time that I did it on mid-range and it was really far and you could see all the mess all over my desk. And here is where I'm finding she spins a little bit more than I want her to. So eventually I put in a second coin and add another coin in there to stick her two further down so she stays in the same orientation as she spins around. She doesn't spin as freely with the second coin, but she certainly doesn't look like she's a drunk mermaid in the middle of the ocean which she sort of looks a bit like now. So here I'm sort of making it so that I'm not adhering the seaweed so it's one over the other over the other over the other. I'm sort of trying to vary it so some are behind, some are in front. And as you can see I've used or I've extended them to make it so that they're larger on the edges and a little bit smaller in the center so that there's a bit of variation in height. Now I'm just going to use my Tim Holtz scissors to cut the bits hanging out over the bottom some little last bits of glue to bits that are sticking up because I don't want the mermaid to get caught on those little bits of seaweed or seagrass. And if you notice I've got a little bit of washi tape over my Tim Holtz scissors and that's because they're serrated on one edge and you can just barely see like a crimping if you hold them the wrong way so that tells me what way to hold them. Now I'm stamping the sentiment, oh gee I forgot, anyway I'm stamping it in uh, the Simon Says Clear Embossing Ink and I'm using a sparkly gold embossing powder from WOW. I think it says there are plenty of fish in the sea but you are a mermaid. I think the sentiment is there are a million fish in the sea but you are a mermaid. And instead of trying to heat emboss on wet distress oxide ink, I decided to ink it up after I'd stamped and heat embossed because I didn't want that gold glitter embossing powder to stick on the oxide. Now I'm matching it on some of that, that uh, gold 
cardstock that came in a previous Simon Says Stamp card kit that I also used on the sides of the card. And I hope you guys enjoyed me leaving a little bit of the colouring in. I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to Copic colouring. I've only been Copic colouring for since just at the beginning of the year. So I'm not, I don't feel I'm very proficient in it. I still screw it up every now and then. And now I'm using some of the uh, the uh, sequins that came in the kit and putting them in an angle from the corner with the sentiment up into the opposing corner up top. As you can see, I'm still having problems with my multimedia map, but it is coming out. So here are the finished pictures and I'm really happy with the card. See the glitter sparkle on her tail? There's a little bit of gloss on the star she's holding and her shell bra and the pearls in her hair. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit like if you liked it. I'd love it if you subscribed and uh, I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, have fun crafting your imagination. Bye.